Hi, welcome to another Canto RoboFlow training movie. In this training movie, I'm going to show you an example on how to load balance the files that come into a drop folder. Imagine that you have a hot folder workflow that processes incoming requests. Could be any kind of file coming in, requests from sites to process something or just images being dropped in it. And you want to try to improve the time it takes to process them. Um, you can do that by having multiple workflows processing at the same time or even multiple RoboFlow instances installed on the same or on different computers. Basically you need to load balance your hot folder. So you can do this by uh, creating a workflow and it's a hot folder template workflow and in the parameters you can set your drop folder and then I added an additional parameter called target drop folders and in this uh, parameter file I define some other drop folders and so the other workflows if you want to load balance you can duplicate your processing workflow a couple of times let's say five times and each of the, those individual workflows that nicely work simultaneously in, in, in a thread, um, you can have them watch uh, look into a different folder. We just have a number here from 1 to 5 and you can have as many as you like of course and uh, by setting this up we can use this parameter file to balance the files that come in. That will what I do is I test in every loop um, how many um, if this is the first item of the loop if it is the first item of the loop I'm resetting a counter a number a file counter to zero mm -hmm. and I'm prefixing it with the, the, the tag global so the variable persists exists uh, continuously for every file in the loop uh, if I don't do that and I have this if test here so this part of the instructions actions are only executed for the first item in the loop then the next item in the loop uh, won't have this file counter variable because I prefix it with global it will then I am going to read only once this parameter file this parameter file I'm not gonna read it over and over again for every file that I'm processing as you know this action script is individually executed for every uh, file that is dropped in your drop folder so I'm opening it to this only if the first item is left once it is uh, doing the next item it's not going into this piece of code so I'm storing uh, the target folder as a file the target uh, file as a file object and then in the next instruction I'm reading this file object I'm storing the text file as a table uh, row columns uh, kind of uh, technology hash table it's called internally and I'm just uh, reading it as a tablet into text file and I'm saying that this is an unsorted searchable table so I'm telling it that you cannot you can search uh, on it by s and I'm saying that the search column is column number one and by doing that I make sure that uh, I will be able to search on the columns. Again, the name under which I'm storing it, I'm prefixing it with it with global, so it exists for all items, all files being processed in this loop. And then I increment my file counter. I just add one. So I started out by zero, so I'm now at file number one. And what I'm doing now is I'm looking in that table that I created in this uh, parameter table. I do a lookup in this column for that specific number. I'm saying I'm at uh, number uh, one. So give me the entry of number one. So that's what I'm doing in this uh, instruction here. I'm uh, saying look in that table and get me the search value is the first parameter to specify so I'm saying you can find that spare parameter inside that file counter and the second part I'm specifying is when it returns the result it gets an array back but I want 
a column from that array. I don't want the whole row back, the whole line. I want column 2 in which the name of the target folder is stored. So I'm storing that under the variable name target. If it finds nothing, I've added here the default value blank, nothing, empty. So I'm testing if that variable that I just created is empty, then it didn't find the entry in the table. So that means I need to reset my loop. I uh, Maybe I've already processed five files, so I'm now have, uh, processing number six. So it needs to go back to number one. So I'm, I know that it's not in the table, so I'm resetting my counter to number one here. So And then I'm storing number one from the table into the target folder. And that's how I keep uh, uh, looping over those five folders. Uh, just when I encounter a number that doesn't exist, I'm just saying, okay, going back to number one. And so then I'm storing the path, I'm creating it if it doesn't exist, and I'm copying the file to it. And so here I create the target folder, and here I copy the file to the target folder. And, that's, and then I add an entry to the log saying I copied the file to this folder. So <clears throat> that's what this workflow is uh, doing. So if I have here a folder, my drop folder, I pick up some files, any files, so I'm just copy pasting something from here. I'd say OK, Control C, and they're just dropped in here in this folder. So I have 18 files in here. So instead of your processing, your one processing workflow having to process 18 files, I can now uh, load balance them over five different workflows, five different hot folders. So if I start it, I can say uh, start. And you can see that they're being processed. The files are going away. And it has created the target folders, you can put them anywhere, of course. I just, as the example, uh, I created them here also in my application folder. And if you look inside, you see the first one got uh, four files. It got the first file, the sixth file, the eleventh file, and the sixteenth file. Mm -hmm. So four files. And you will see that, for instance, number five only has three, because there's only sixteen files. So, uh, so that's how easy it is and in your log you can see show log you can see that uh, it has processes I were 18 files sorry that it has processed these 18 files and you can see to which folder each time the file was redirected so a very simple way to make your RoboFlow process your workflows or your requests uh, even faster. Thank you for joining and see you in another training movie.